In this video, we're going to talk about total utility and marginal utility, and we're going to bring up some little esoteric issues that, that cause some misunderstandings sometimes whenever you start to use calculus to talk about marginal utility. So let's look at this. Um, by, to begin, let's look at a function of one variable. Let's suppose that we want to talk about calculating a measure of satisfaction or happiness uh, by consuming one product. So this is going to be a function of one variable here. And let's look at this particular function here. Um, utility equals 10 times the square root of h. So I'm thinking about h as being hamburgers or something like this. This is what we would call a total utility function because you plug in any number of hamburgers here for h and it gives you your total utility. Now I have a graph of this function down here, um, but let's, to make sure that we're really understanding what's going on in the graph, let's also calculate some numbers. And, and let's do this to start the way you would probably think about this in an introductory micro class. Now there's nothing wrong with what we're going to do, it's, it's just a little simpler. Uh, what we might do to start off with is make a little table over here and say, well, for, for different values of H, for different amounts of hot dogs, we might want to calculate the value of U, utility. And so we could put in uh, no hot dogs in one and two and three, for example, and uh, four. And we could keep going. And um, if the utility is equal to 10 times the square root of the number of hot dogs, then for no hot dogs, we're going to get no utility. That's 10 times the square root of 0. 10 times the square root of 1 is going to give us 10 utils, or 10 happiness points. Um, two hot dogs would give us 14.14 utils. Three hot dogs would give us 17.32, I'm just rounding these off to a couple of decimal places here, and four hot dogs, 10 times the square root of four, would give us 20 utils of happiness. And so you see that as we consume more hamburgers, we get happier and happier and happier. Very straightforward. And these points match up with this blue uh, line in the graph here to tell us for any amount of hamburgers, we can look up at the blue line and then look over at the the axis on the left hand side and that will tell us uh, the amount of utility. So if we look at this total utility function, another thing we want to talk about is marginal utility. Economists are all about marginal things. So now you know by this point that marginal means additional utility. So what we might do to to calculate marginal utility if we're talking about the idea that you can only order one, two, three, or four, you know, discrete numbers of hamburgers here, we can calculate the marginal utility. How much additional happiness does each of these hamburgers give me? Well, it doesn't make any sense to calculate it for no hamburgers, but the first hamburger adds 10 to our utility. We're going from zero to 10. So that first hamburger makes me 10 happy. The second hamburger takes me up to 14.14, so that adds 4.14 in happiness there. So the third hamburger takes us from 14.14 to 17.32, and so that's going to take us up about 3.18 utils. So if we're trying to figure out whether it's worth it to buy this hamburger, we need to know how much each hamburger adds to our happiness. And this fourth hamburger would add uh, 2.68, just kind of eyeballing that there, 2.68 additional utils, so marginal utility of each hamburger. Now if we look at the graph, uh, how can we see what, where these numbers, these marginal utility numbers come from on the graph? Well pretty easily what we're kind of doing here is we're not really looking at the slope of the function. What we're really doing here is, uh, let me, let me uh, use a little highlighter here, see if we can see this. What we're really doing is, is we're looking at, well that's an odd highlighter, let me change that. 
All right, I, I changed it to a smaller dot there. Uh, what we're really doing, if we if we try to figure out the marginal utility of the first hamburger, how can we see that on the graph? It's really like we take a, a line and we draw it between these two points. This point at 0, 0, and then this point at 1 and 10. And you can think about it as representing the slope between those two points because between those two points what we're doing is we're going up 10 and we're going over 1 and so the rise is 10 the run is 1 the the slope of that yellow line is 10 similarly if we want to know what the um, slope of the line is between let me change it to a different color here briefly um, if we want to um, figure out where does this marginal utility number of 4.14 come from, well we can think about it as we're drawing a line between this point uh, when we start eating the second hamburger is after the first hamburger and if we look here at when we finish eating the second hamburger there's this line, this little line segment that goes from the point uh, x equals 1 and y equals 10 utils and over to two hamburgers and 14.14 utils. And between those two points, we're, we're going up 4.14 and over one more hamburger. And so because this, this 10 times the square root of x function is curved, this little line is always going to be below uh, the actual curve that represents our, our utility function. Now, why am I, I being so particular about this? Well, because in an intermediate microeconomics class, normally what you do is, is you learn that uh, a marginal function is the derivative of a total function. So if we were to take the derivative of this function, uh, u equals 10 times the square root of h, let's just do that really quickly here. Uh, the derivative of utility with respect to h, these, these should actually be square d's. I'm going to kind of use random notation uh, from time to time. Please excuse, please forgive me. Um, to take the derivative of this, remember that h, the square root of h is h to the point 5, and so we need to multiply the exponent by 10. Point 0.5 times 10 gives us 5 times h to the minus point 0.5. That's, that's the derivative. Uh, which we could write, we could rewrite as 5 over the square root of h. Oh, sorry, yes, to the minus 0.5 is uh, 1 over the square root of h. And that is a marginal utility function. Why is it a marginal utility function? Because what it does is it tells us the slope of our total utility function here at any point. Now, let's plug in Here's where some misunderstandings come, come in sometimes. Let's plug in um, one hamburger into this marginal utility function here and see what we get. Well, if you plug in one into this function, then what we're going to get for one hamburger, h equals uh, one, you're going to get five over the square root of one equals one, which would make you think that the marginal utility of the first hamburger is equal to 5, which it isn't, right? Because if your professor just tells you that the, uh, the uh, sorry, I don't know why that came out at 1. My pen's jumping around. I apologize. Um, if, if your professor tells you that the derivative of utility is marginal utility, then, then a lot of times people think that, well, all I have to do then is, is take that derivative, plug in one hamburger, and that will tell me the marginal utility of the first hamburger. But that's not really quite the case. Let me show you what's going on here. What happens is that the marginal utility, if you're calculating it for the whole first hamburger, is the slope, as we talked about, between this point here at uh, zero hamburgers and one hamburger is the slope of the yellow line right there. However, 
when you take the derivative and you calculate the slope at hamburgers equals 1, here's what you're getting. You're getting the slope of this green line that is tangent to the utility curve at that point. And what that tells you is the rate of increase, the slope of the utility function at that point. But that's how fast your utility is going up as you finish the first hamburger. Instead of thinking about the whole hamburger, think about little tiny bites. That first little tiny bite of hamburger right down here, look at how steep that slope is. That first bite of the hamburger is oh so good. The slope is very high because your utility is going up at a very fast rate, but that doesn't last very long. The second bite your, your, your utility is going up at a little slower rate and then a little slower rate, a slower, slower, and slower until by the time you take the very last bite of the hamburger your, your utility is going up only at the rate of five utils per hamburger. But that rate only is useful. That rate is only true at that one little point as I'm finishing the first hamburg hamburger and as I begin eating the second hamburger. The slope is 5. As you continue eating the second hamburger, the second and the third and the fourth bite of the second hamburger becomes a little less good, a little less good. The marginal utility of each bite gets smaller and smaller and smaller to where on average the second hamburger gives you uh, more utility at a rate of 4.14. Just like the first hamburger gives you extra utility at a rate of an average rate of 10 utils for the hamburger. A lot more for the first few bites, a lot less for the, for the last few bites. You know, there we're getting close to that marginal utility rate of 5, uh, but on average as you eat that first hamburger, you're getting 10 utils. Now in the next video, we're going to look at a similar, some similar kinds of ideas, but we're going to be looking at two inputs into utility. So that then we can start talking about how you can make choices between two different goods based on what the prices are.